Okay, hi Potters. Um, I'm going to show you uh, the video for throwing a vase. We have a lot of new knowledge with throwing a vase. Um, the first one being throwing off a bat. Um, we have multiple different kinds of bats. I'm going to be using this one today. Uh, when you grab a bat, you want to make sure that the bat is clean, that there's no chunks of clay on it on the front or the back. Um, if there's a chunk of clay, it will wobble. So make sure you do that first. You also want to make sure that your wheel head is clean. Again, if there's chunks of clay on the wheel head, that will also make it wobble. In here, we have two bat pins, okay? This is what um, we store our bat pins on or in. And get this open. This is what they look like. They are just this pin here, whoops, and a wing nut, like so, okay? So you put that through the hole, you get your hand underneath there, and you tighten it on. You wanna make sure that your bat pins um, don't jiggle, that they're tight enough that they're not jiggling. And then uh, with these orange bats, uh, we're gonna use the bigger holes here. That's the holes that have the three little bumps on the side. So I'm gonna line that up, put that on, make sure it's nice and secure. Remember, you also need to test to make sure that your bat isn't warped and wobbling. So I'm gonna go this way, I'm gonna go this way, make sure there's no clicking. I'm gonna do this, push side to side, side to side. Um, it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna get my ball of clay. Um, you are definitely experienced enough now that you can play around with using um, more clay or less clay. Uh, for this demo, I'm using about a softball size piece of clay. I'm gonna plop that down to the middle of the wheel, give it a couple pat-pats. Now, learning to throw um, a base, we have to bring up our prior knowledge of throwing a cylinder. So first I'm gonna center this. New knowledge is um, coning up. So to cone up, we put the heels of our hands at um, seven o'clock and two o'clock and wrap our fingers around and kind of squeeze as we bring that clay up. And then at an angle here, don't go straight down, at an angle, you're gonna push that back down. This just kind of helps prepare the clay um, and get it ready for throwing. Do that one more time, coning up, push it down. Now, if you listen carefully, you might be able to hear a clicking sound right there. That means one of my bat pins has loosened up. So I'm going to check on that and make sure that those are tight. harder to do with slippery hands. Okay, so back to work. Remember that you want to do each step properly and correctly so that you can go on to the next uh, step and be successful. So there is our centered piece of clay. Make sure you don't have a skirt here. If you do, just kind of scrape it off with your fingernail. This is all review from throwing a cylinder. I'm gonna put my center hole in. Remember when you're putting your center hole in, you're not jabbing it in this way. Although your, your finger is at an angle, you're pushing that fingertip down in the center. Make sure you have plenty of water in there to do that. You can use more than one finger if you need to. Once I have my center hole, I'm gonna put water in there and I'm gonna pull the floor. Looks like I have a big air bubble. 
can't blame anybody except myself because I watched this. So when I pull the floor, I also want to flatten the floor and compress it, which means you're just kind of applying pressure down towards the bat. This will help prevent S-cracking. I'm also working on making sure I have a 90 degree angle on the inside here. Once I have that done, I'm gonna take water. I've seen a lot of people putting water on like this. There's no need to. Since your wheel's spinning, you just stay in one spot, squeeze your water on the rim, and it should go on the inside and outside and be all ready for throwing. I still would like you to try to throw the majority of your cylinder in three pulls, like you learned. Now, you've probably got used to having your thumb on the outside of your pot when you're throwing. Once you get this large, you cannot have your thumb on the outside of your pot because you can't get down to the bottom of the pot. So again, before I pull the wall, I get water on the inside and outside of my pot, nice and even. And now I have to tuck that thumb in so I can get all the way down there to the bottom. I'm going to apply a little bit more pressure down here at the bottom to narrow that base and to bring up that extra weight. When you're throwing a cylinder in preparation for making a base, you want to make sure that it's going straight up and down. Don't let it flare out here at the top. So there's my three poles. The next step is going to be bellying out. So giving this pot a belly. And that is another new knowledge. Water on your pot. Now to belly out, okay, so for a cylinder, your outside fingertips are below, right? For a bowl, your outside fingers are above so that your inside fingers can push that out. For a vase with a belly, you're gonna switch those two, depending on what you want it to do. When we want it to belly out, we're gonna have the, out, uh, the outside fingers above. When we wanna go back to more of a cylinder or push it in, we're gonna switch those outside fingers to below. Remember we talked about natural and, and non-natural curves? You wanna make sure whatever you do, you have a natural curve. Nothing too abrupt. So there's the beginning of that belly. I'm just gonna go halfway up there. The bottom of my pot, or the top of my pot is pretty thin. I'm gonna try to stretch that belly out a little bit more. Get some roundness and fullness there. So there you have it there is the belly to your pot. Now it doesn't perhaps look like a very big belly right now, but once I choke this top part and trim this part, it will really bring that belly out. Now, the thing about vases is that you have to be done with the bottom part of the vase before you start choking. I'm looking for my metal rib, there it is. I love using ribs. Um, they kind of strengthen your pot. They smooth them out. They also help with some curves. So I'm supporting, I'm using the rib. I'm not scraping it like this. Like a lot of times people will hold it like this. It's more like a petting like this. So I'm supporting that with the inside of my hand and just applying a light pressure. So I'm pushing my inside fingertips onto that rib, the clay in between. So that gives it a nice round finish look. Okay, so like I said, with a vase, you have to be done with the bottom part of the vase before you start choking. Because once you start choking, this is gonna get so small that you can't get your hands back in there to throw the bottom. You also need to make sure that there's no water in the bottom. So make sure that you take your sponge, always make sure that your pot is spinning just a little bit. Take your sponge, 
get that water out, and then come up. Don't just jab your sponge in there without it spinning, um, otherwise it'll get off center. So to choke my pot, I wanna make sure I have not, lots of slip on my hand. I also wanna make sure I have slip on the outside of the pot. And how you do that, because remember, we don't wanna get any water inside the pot after, at this point. You take your hand like this, just kinda of cup it at 12 o'clock, and put your water in the palm of your hand, and it will go down the outside of the pot, protecting the inside. So now that I have that done, I'm gonna take my fingers like this, Common mistake when people are choking is they'll put their thumbs like this and try to kind of do it like this. You really want to try to get those thumbs around there. So, paying attention to the, the natural curve. I also don't want to just choke in like this. I want to gradually choke in and bring that up. So, that this is what that looks like. Choking and bringing that up. My wheel's going medium slow, I would say. Now, every time you choke your pot, you have to throw where you choked it. So I'm gonna to try to get my fingertips in there and throw that part that I choked. Let me explain to you what's happening when you're choking. Say your pot is this wide and you choke it and that this thickness of clay, like if the clay is as thick as my fingers, you choke it, the thickness of that clay gets thicker. Therefore, you have to pull the wall again so that it evens out. So, choked, pulled, and I'm gonna choke again. Now I know I can't get my fingers all the way down this low, so I'll show you some tricks. And now instead of choking like this, I want it to be smaller, so I'm kind of using these three fingers to choke it. And bringing that up to the top. Now remember that your rim will get uneven um, when you're choking your pot. I will show you how to cut that off. Okay, I can't get down this far, but I can get this far, so I'm gonna pull this part. Each time you pull this wall, your pot should get a little bit taller. Now that rim is becoming a little distracting, so I'm gonna take my needle tool, make sure that it's clean. I'm gonna hold the rim with my little pinchy fingers here. I'm not pinching it, I'm just holding onto it. I'll do it from this side so hopefully you can see. I'm holding that needle tool in one spot and gradually putting it in. And then the top of the pot will come off just like that. You're gonna smooth that out and go again. So I wanna get a nice narrow neck, bringing my hands up very slowly. Now at this point, the pot, the neck of the pot is definitely too small for me to get in there and throw. So a couple things. Um, this tool, which mine's really dirty right now, your wooden knife. Um, on the non-knife side is like a finger looking tool. You go in there with your, they call this a throwing stick. I'm applying pressure with that stick on the inside and bringing that clay up like so. I'm gonna try to push this a little bit further and even make this skinnier. See, it's kind of wobbling there. Let me see if I can counteract that wobble. Using a throwing stick. all the way up to the top. Yep, I still got a little bit of a wobble. Okay, so there's my neck. Um, and now I'm going to take my metal rib 
Let me just kind of clean this up. So I, I'm not applying a lot of pressure. I'm gonna do this with the sponge first to get that extra slip off. Get that extra slip off. Notice, woo, baby. Notice how I'm putting my finger uh, in the top of the pot. That's because this is so fragile that if I push too much, it's gonna wobble right off. So I'm just cleaning this up a little bit. Not a lot of pressure because I don't have anything supporting it on the inside. Here I'm just going to have to embrace that little spiral there on the neck, like so. Also finishing touches would be to use your chamois. Whoop. I'm going to have to support that neck, it's too skinny. Alright, so use my chamois to smooth that out. I'm just going to clean this up where I had to touch it. All right. Now, for the next step, so now you can see our belly is appearing larger because we've choked that in. Now, the next step is to, I'm going to dry my hands off on my towel, and it's to trim the extra weight off of the bottom. With the vases, we um, don't trim them um, upside down on the leather hard. We trim them on the wheel. So I'm gonna take this tool, and this is review from when you were doing cylinders. And you can do this gradually. I'm just gonna take off a little bit at a time to get the shape that I want. Remember, we're thinking about how the bottom of the pot relates to the top of the pot proportionally how do the si sizes look and then your last step is to make that undercut I'm just cleaning this up a little bit do not forget the undercut I will not be firing any pots that do not have an undercut so for your undercut um, just to review the angle side of the tool is on the left you hold on to it nice and tight, you spin your wheel, and just cut under. Once you've done that, you take your metal knife, cut it like a cake, and get that extra clay up. And at this point, um, you're done on the wheel. Um, you could play around with altering this. Maybe you want to you, you make it so it's not round and so you're gonna kind of squeeze this here. You could play around with bending the neck, um, whatever you want to do at this point. Taking your bat off the wheel, well, first of all, the reason that we use a bat is so that we don't have to mess with this delicate or large object. We can just take it right off the wheel. You just have to be careful, like this side sticks. Ugh. So I'm gonna really, cause I don't want to pop it off because that will mess that neck up. Woo. So I'm very carefully loosening it up. Take it off the wheel like so. Go put it in front of the fan uh, until the end of class um, or at least clean up and then at that point you're going to take it off the bat. It, will sh it should have at least gotten leather hard at that point. Um, take it off the bat, transfer it onto a board, cover it and finish it. Uh, do your finishing touches uh, your next, next time you're here. Um, unfortunately, because we have such a uh, large number of students, um, we can't store things on the bats. Um, otherwise, there won't be enough bats for everybody. So again, take your pot off the wheel, put it in front of the fan, let it, dr let it dry a little bit while you're working, remove it from the bat, put it on a board, cover it, plastic with your name on your class cart, and it'll be all ready for you to do your finishing touches when you come back to class next. All right, you guys, have fun making vases and bottles. Uh, experiment. Uh, you have enough new knowledge and prior knowledge now um, to really uh, have some fun uh, throwing on the wheel. All right, see you soon.